Okay then guys, we're well, back to the next video. This time we're looking at this very small CPU cooler from Akasar. It is the H4A. It's very, very small. Let's see how it compares. Okay, so in terms of specifications, it does come with a socket type of AM4 and AM5. Now it is only AM4 and AM5. As you can see from the overall mounting, it is on the space for AM4 and AM5. But when it comes to cooler dimensions, it is 94 times 94 times 29.5 millimeters. That would be height, width, as well as overall length. So as for the heatsink, it is aluminium fins with a copper, with four copper heat pipes, which as you can see by here are rather small, but you know, that's one of them things. Weight, it does come at 232 grams and of course the TDP for this is 95 watts so it is generally for CPUs that do not ge uh, generate more than 90 watts but when it comes to like the bearing type it is a ball bearing fan speed does go from 800 to 3600 the max airflow CFM is 40 Max air pressure is 2.2 millimeter. Noise level, it is between 17 and 35.8 dBA. Current rate in for fan, it is a 0.2 A amp. And voltage, of course, is 12 with a four pin PWM connector, which is by here. And of course, it has 40,000 hours life expectancy with a two year warranty. This is the Akasar Alicia H4A low profile air cooler at 50% fan speed. It's not very loud at 50%. This is 100% fan speed. Now that is running at 3500 RPM, that's 100%, at 50% it goes down to 2500 RPM. Okay then, so I've done my normal run of benchmarks and here are the results. For Cinebench R23, the idle is 39 Celsius with a max of 90, Blender Classroom, the idle is 39 Celsius with a max of 90, Blender Pavilion, the idles with 39 Celsius with a max of 90 Celsius and 3D Mark CPU test, the idles with 39 Celsius with a max of 90 and the CPU was drawn 134 watts at the time of testing. Now what I'm going to do after the overall slide, uh, graphs I show you from the, this testing is I'm going to show you a graph of this CPU against a lot of the other low profile air coolers i've got here so you guys can get a rough idea of which one is the best to buy and i hope that actually helps you make a big decision so what i'm going to do is put the graph here and you guys can just take from what i've done i'll show you the results and then of course then that will be primarily up to you okay then so look when it comes to this this cpu cooler from axar this is primarily for apu cpus it's generally for a cpu that has onboard graphics and as well that doesn't draw a lot of power now of course this has a tdp of 95 watts which considering that the 5900x does actually draw 142 watts with any cooler at standard that's with not touching anything in the bios so considering that this still managed to handle it at 134 watts is quite actually impressive now the cpu didn't thermal throttle i did not it stayed above the base clocks for f for full load on the cpu and overall the voltage that stayed within the margin of error when it comes to overall performance now for a small cpu cooler like this it's primarily for a stock replacement over the intel and amd stock coolers I will say this is definitely made better. It's definitely got much more of a quality feel. And of course, it's definitely, I'd say, looks better in person. That, but that's, of course, that's my personal opinion. I've had stock AMD and Intel coolers in the past. And I will say this does look much more striking when it comes to a stock cooler. Now, of course, that 
this is specifically for AMD, it's for AM4 and AM5, it's not compatible with Intel, they have a different variant vi version of this that is specifically for just Intel, so make sure you put that into consideration if you decide to buy this, it's not going to be compatible with the Intel because they do a separate version that is compatible with Intel. Now, I think for something that is really small, I mean, this look how thin that is. That is really, really small for an air cooler. I think it performed well, but of course, 90 Celsius, that is the overall top of the 5000 series from AMD. So, whether that is good or not, I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. But if you've got a 5900X, that's actually within the small form factor build scenario where you've got a really small case i primarily wouldn't use this for a 5900x but if you have a 5600g or an 8600g that doesn't draw more than 90 watts even a full load then i think this is definitely a good option but i personally would go with the bigger version of this which i previously just reviewed the h6l i do prefer that one it's bigger but also it's not as bad a mountain when it comes to AMD. Now a lot of low profile air coolers do tend to have funky mounting and all that type of stuff but this one and the other one doesn't and I think they both perform very well. So whether you want to buy this or not that is up uh, completely up to you. I'm just going to give you the information and um, whether you buy it or not that's your decision. I'm not going to tell you to buy it or not to buy it because my opinion when it comes to you guys buying something doesn't really matter i just give you the data i tell you if it's good or not and that's primarily what i do so yeah now look i've got a build small form factor build coming which is my first ever one as rock is sending me out a motherboard for that specific build and i've got other stuff here i've got a box of fans from thermaltake i've got stuff coming from a pacer my first ever gen 5 drive and of course, I've got other stuff coming from the likes of Target and stuff like that. So make sure you subscribe for that. And as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. This is Richard from Welshie Tech. Good bye.